What is going on everyone? In Genshin Impact, there are many characters you can choose from. And obviously, if you had been playing for a week or two, you probably have noticed that there are some performance difference between the characters. And you probably came across this video just to find out which character you should probably invest your valuable resource into. So here we are, making a tier list for content creators are very, very hard. Because when you say something about a character and if it happens to be wrong or if it happens to be a little opinionated, a lot of the viewers would probably leave a very bad or very toxic comments on YouTube and they probably want to avoid that. But I would like to take this bullet and I've been working on this tier list for a long time and I want you guys to take a look at it with me, all right? Let me talk about myself. I had been playing this game for a long time. I also own two FTP accounts, one Battle Pass account, and my account obviously is a real account. So this tier list is about a character and it doesn't base anything on C6 performance because if that is the case, this tier list needs to just kind of change. Anyways, let's get down to it right away. We start with Panet. Bennett is a pyro support character that can also do a lot of damage. If you give him Noblesse set, he can do his job. You don't have to give him Crimson Witch set, it is really expensive set for you to farm. If you were to farm that, you're either doing that for your D-Look, maybe for Hotel. His best in style weapon is going to be anything that has the highest base attack, which is going to be either Aquila Favonia or Miss Splitter. Miss Splitter is very good for C6 Bennett. If not, you can probably stick with Aquila Favonia. He is a core character for all the party members. Unless you're going for a Mono Geo team, you can always use your Bennett, and he is just the top tier. Everyone says that he's like 6-star or Pyro Archon. Next, we're moving on to Sing Chu. He's a Hydro sub DPS slash support, mainly because he is the best character for any Pyro DPS characters. Well, to be honest, two specific characters are going to be Diluc and Hu Tao. However, you can use him for other Pyro characters as well. Also, he can be in a national team where you put Bennett, Xiangling, Xingqiu, and plus Alpha. You can put Kazuha there, you can put Sucrose there, you can do whatever you want. He's just too essential for Pyro DPS. That is why he is S tier. Third character I would like to talk about, although it could be a little expensive, Kazuha. If anyone can choose one 5 star from all the characters in Genshin Impact, I would recommend Kazuha. And that is why I had to put him in S. You can use F2P weapons like Iron Sting or anything that has elemental mastery in the secondary stats in the weapon. And his passive where he increases the elemental damage bonus, it is just so good in the game. He can almost double your damage. That's enough for Kazuha, let's move on to A tier. We have Ayaka. Cryo is just too valuable in the game right now and her multi-hit and her damage potential is just so high. Even at C0, she is great. You can just use her for breaking the shield. You can also do damage using Bennett as well. She prefers to use full Blizzard set. Next up, Raiden Shogun. What more can I say? Raiden Shogun is a very good character that works so good in national team. Again, what is national team? Bennett, Xiangling, Xingqiu, and there's Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun would like to use full Fate set. And after you get your ult up with Raiden Shogun, you're going to be using her Q and you're going to be attacking the enemy. And then swap back to your other characters and do rotations again. You want to build her with 250 plus energy charge, which means she gets her ult really, really quickly, allowing her to spam her ult every time she has energy. Let's move on to Ganyu. Ganyu, I would say that... It is one of the characters that F2P players love the most because if they're lucky enough, they can probably have Amos Bow and with that Amos Bow, you can probably would be able to see some very high damage that other whales can do because money cannot buy your normal attack skill levels. Also, her charge level 2 has no ICD, which means you're going to be able to break Hydro Shield really fast with her charge attack. Make sure you use a shield character for her. And also, not only that, but her Q radius is very large. Like I said, in this game, Cryo element is very important. And especially when you're going to Spirit Abyss, you would want to have a character that can break shield really fast. So that is why Ayaka is A, Ganyu is also A. You would like to go for Wanderer set if you have Alms Bow. If not, you can go for a Blizzard set that also does enough damage to clear Spirit Abyss. Let's move on to Diona. I know that some people might be wondering why Diona is an A tier. I kind of wanted to put her in S, but her performance wise, she's a great battery. She also heals. But when it comes to healing, her healing ability is a little less than Bennett. 
Only if she did more damage as a character, maybe I would probably put her in S, but she can't do damage. But if you build her with HP and make her shield thick, then I believe she would be very good. Except when there's too much damage incoming from the enemy. For example, when there's a corrosion effect, when the enemy is just too strong and you get one hit, and when you have like 10% HP left, you would probably have to go for a better healer, okay? You can go for 4 piece no bless it. You want to use Favonius Bow or Sacrificial Bow. I prefer Favonius Bow though. Just in case you want to use it for a Shinha team, like a mono cryo team, you can just use it for anything. Moving on to Kokomi. She is the best healer and her Hydro Replication is very great. Her artifact set, you want to go for a Clam set. It would only take 3 or 4 days for F2 piece to farm her complete set. You want to focus on HP percentage, energy recharge, and that's it. I'm saying this here because not many people know or are going to look for what artifact set is the best for Kokomi. If you want to focus on our damage, you want to go for HP, Hydro Damage Bonus, and Healing Bonus. If you don't really care about her damage, then you can probably go for HP, HP, and Healing Bonus. Anyways, moving on to Child. He is a very great Hydro Enabler, and just as much as Cryo, Hydro Enabler is very important in this game. It allows you to make a Taser team. My first initial thought was that he's going to be very janky when you play him with C0, but if you do enough rotations, you're going to have no problem playing him. Also, he has a burst damage with his Q. If you go for Child by any chance, then you will not regret. And here is Ayato. I had to put Ayato in A because 1. He was a Hydro Enabler and 2. The character function at C0 versus C6, it stays the same. C6 doesn't make him do crazy amount of damage. And yes, if you have seen him doing like 60k each slash, that's gonna be C6, R5 with Kazuha, Bennett, all the supports. That is unrealistic damage. Yeah, it could be fun, but that's like a whale toy. It's not really a real team. Anyways, he is gonna be very good if we are getting Electro Healer that does Electro Damage here and there because I found it really hard for me to come up with a Taser team with Ayato. Anyways, you can either mix match attack percentage set or the Hydro set. You can also go for the newest set if you want to. If not, you don't have to go for that. Just you can do whatever you want. Anyways, moving on to Shangling. What more can I say about Shangling? I have doubted her for a long time until I have seen her damage in Kazuha National Team. You want to go for either 4-piece Fate set, which is one that I would recommend. Or also, you could go for anything that benefits her damage, which set. And also, there's a weapon that you can get by fishing in Genshin Impact. It's called the Catch. The Catch gives you extra crit rate for your burst. And Xiangling uses burst and swap out to a different character. And that is why the weapon is really good. You can also use the Battle Pass weapon, which is $10. Deathmatch. You could use Staff of Homa. Whatever floats your boat, man. Moving on to Hu Tao. Hu Tao, what more can I say? Although she's a little janky at C0, she's still one of the best pyro DPS that I can recommend. Although I prefer Deluxe playstyle a little bit more, I guess you can just choose one. If you do by any chance have Deluxe and by any chance have some good weapons like Wolves, Greystone, the Unforced, you could probably go with Deluxe. But hey, I think you should probably follow your weapon. But anyways, her charge attack has no ICD, so if you were to break a shield with her, it's gonna be very nice. And also, at the same time, Deluxe E has no ICD as well, but this is Hotel Spotlight, so uh, let's talk about Deluxe later. Anyways, her best in slot weapon is going to be Staff of Homa, of course. If not, you can go for anything else. Her artifacts, though, you should be going for, well, I prefer Shime Sit, which gives you extra damage for doing charge attacks. But if your hotel's not C1, then you probably want to go for Crimson Witch Sit. Because you won't be able to charge attack so many times unless you do jump canceling, which I think is very hard for me. Like, I don't prefer jump canceling. It's just too much of a hassle, to be honest. Let's move on to Fischl. Fischl is one of the core characters for Taser Team. And what is a Taser Team? You should probably be able to guess it because I was talking about Taser Team with Hydro Enablers. So that is right. Electro Charged. When you consistently create Electro Charge reactions, then that is what you call a Taser Team. What is so great about Taser Team? Here is the idea. So usually when you're swirling off the elements with animal characters so that you can take down their res with uh, the very distant set, usually you can swirl off one element each time because they can't really coexist. Except when there's an Electro Charge, we see Hydro and Electro at the same time. So when you swirl that off, you're swirling off two elements at the same time. So that is why it is really good. And Venti is a 
You probably have wondered why, because I said Binti is, you know, not so great. But still, Binti is a oat machine where you can create an element swirl that can last certain elements to stay longer. So for example, I need to talk about this later, but let's take Mona for example. Her Hydra application is so bad, her E lasts for maybe like about 3-4 seconds and that is way too short for your perma freeze team or anything like that. If you have Venti, you can extend that Hydra application for 5-6 seconds more. Anyways, let's move on to Sucrose. Sucrose is fully functional at C0. Well, not fully functional, but she still does the same thing at C0 versus C6. At C6, she becomes a better support, she does more damage, and so on. However, if you do have Kazuha and other characters, it's easy for you to kind of walk away from her. Unless you're going to be staying as an F2P for a long time, you should probably see how your roster goes. And then decide to actually invest into Sucrose. And also, before we move on to B tier, I would like to let you know that Catalyst characters can hold on to a TTDS, Dragon Slayer, which can buff the next character that you swap to from that Catalyst character that is wearing TTDS by X amount of attack percentage, which is very great. It is so good for F2Ps, small spenders, and even for uh, showcases for me as a whale. So keep that in mind, and let's move on to B. Jean, I had to put her in B, although she is one of the independent characters. What are independent characters? They are the characters that are still really good by themselves. For example, when you're building a team, you want to go for a group of characters that can do enough damage. And then after that, you add whatever element that you need for probably shields, or probably to break the shields, or for the healing. So, Jean is a all-rounder character. She's an animal, so she can throw off elements with the VV set. She can low res. She can also do damage here and there if you build her right. But there's one thing about her. If you build her first as F2P small spender or as a beginner, you're going to suffer a lot because you probably have noticed if you had been playing for Genshin Impact a lot, your resource in Genshin Impact are very, very scarce. Unless you spend so much money, it's kind of impossible for you to get a lot of Moras in short period of time. Also, at the same time, your resin is limited, so talent materials, they're also limited. So keep that in mind, guys. You want to build your other characters before you decide to move on to Jean, okay? She's a very solid character, but don't work on her too fast, okay? Let's move on to Mona. She has a very unique ult that lets you do more damage with her Q debuff. It's called Omen debuff. At level 9 or 10, you will be doing 60% more damage. People were using that for Parma Freeze Team, but not really so preferred in Parma Freeze Team anymore because people started to get farmed up. They got enough damage to kill monsters in Spiral Abyss. Anyways, Mona is still great, but not as great as other Hydro characters. They were mentioned in A tier. Moving on to Yaimiko, I would love to put her in S. However, there is a little constraint about using Yaimiko. Her best team, I believe, is Kasuha, Yaimiko, Kujosara, C6 highlight, and then Bennett. If that is the case, Yaimiko should be able to do a lot of damage, and it would probably surprise you a lot. However, she needs everyone to buff her, and her random targeting with her turret is not so consistent, for me, it was better because it was easier for me to control her targeting because there was a little fix by Mihoyo, but now it has been fixed back because a lot of the people believe that her best team is for Taser. I strongly disagree. Her best team is for her ultimate Yaimiko carry team. What is so great about Yaimiko is that you can mix match and also her best in slot weapon, it doesn't have to be Verity. You can always go for Skyward Atlas. Do you know how many Skyward Atlas I have pulled on my FTP account? It's one of the best characters to use Skyward Atlas on. Let's move on to Shinha. Shinha has made Ayaka my main again. She is still good at C0. However, she is still pretty niche. You can make your cryo characters do more damage here and there, but I would much rather go for different characters than Shinha right away. Unless you can make like three teams all by yourself, it will be preferable for you to kind of uh, move away from Shinha. There's always going to be a rerun, right? So don't worry so much. The best artifacts for Shinha is going to be attack percentage set. You want to mix match so that you can get 36% attack percentage bonus from the set. Just like Bennett, you want to go for a weapon that has the highest base attack. Preferably that gives you attack percentage. And let's move on to Zhongli. You might be wondering, why isn't Zhongli S or A? He is great, but it seems like as people are getting farmed up and getting stronger here and there, Zhongli is not so mandatory anymore because people are just getting better and better at playing this game and better at coming up with team. 
You can go with four piece melee set. You can mix match for Archaic Petra and Noblesse so that you can build him as a burst support. But I prefer using him as a, a shielder. So I gave him like the melee set and I gave him all the HP percentage on the sands, goblet, and circlet. It works out pretty well because I have enough damage. If you don't have enough damage, you can probably go for a burst support. And he's still great. Moving on to Rosaria. Again, Rosaria Q, Rosaria E. She is a great battery. She has a short cooldown for her E. And then her Q does a lot of cryo hits. That means she's okay at breaking shields. And she's great for rotation teams. You can go for 4 piece Noblesse set. Or you can also go for 4 piece Blizzard set. On my F2P account, Shinha team has carried me so hard. I was using Shinha, Rosaria, Chongyun, and Diona. And that 4 team, it was actually doing more damage than my Vaporize team. But you have to keep that in mind that there's always a rotation in Spear Abyss, so you have to be careful. I personally do not like Xiao, but he is a one of the most wanted character by F2P small spenders because he looks badass. He does plunge attacks, and even as F2P or small spender, you can do enough damage to kill the enemies. If you ever get lucky, his best in slot weapon is going to be Jade Spear. I can't really recommend Xiao. But if so many people love Xiao and they use Xiao, there has to be a reason, right? Moving on to Kaya. Kaya, if you have noticed, Kaya, Amber, Lissa, it is super hard for you to get the constellations. If you get lucky enough and get constellations, congratulations. Kaya is really, really good with constellations, and even without it, he's really great. He is cryo, and after you use your Q, he's gonna have this icicle around him, and it does cryo hits. And like I said, Cryo is very valuable in this game when it comes to shield breaking. And the reason why he is B, it's because he's a sword character. If you just use him for rotations, it's fine. But if you use him for a main DPS, then it becomes a little weird because his E and Q are Cryo, whereas his normal attack damage is going to be physical attack. That means if you were to make him strong or try to use both of his kits, you would want to go for a weapon called Akula Favonia that gives you attack and physical damage bonus. But I think if you use him for rotation team, then he's gonna be okay. But still, he's not as effective as other characters and his Q has radius. You have to get to the opponent, you know? That is the reason why he's B. Moving on to Albedo. Albedo, he can be put in any team. Albedo is kind of needed in Mono Geo team for Ito. And I'm gonna have to talk about Ito as well as Albedo. And if I were to compare, I would like to say that Ito is more useful than Albedo. But Albedo is a very universal character. Very independent. I used to hate him so much, but I can't really deny the fact that he's very useful for the people who doesn't have enough damage. And we have C. What more can I say? C groups are mostly with okay DPSs. For example, there is Yula, there is Diluc, there is Klee. I can't dare to put her in D. So uh, although I would like to say that Diluc is better than Klee, but they're still in the same category. There is Klee, there is Razor. You'd be wondering why Razor? But it is what it is. He still does damage if you buff him enough. Although he's not so good because Yula. But if you don't have Yula and you still want to go for physical damage, then you can go for Razor. There's Chongyun. Chongyun is very good for Yula. He infuses all the melee attacks to Cryo, unless it's specified. There's Yoimiya. Yoimiya is a very expensive character, although her performance at C6 is so great. She is still a single target. Her auto-targeting is a little janky, so there she is. There's Goro. The reason why Goro is below Albedo Ito is because we all know. By himself, he's like nobody. There's Yunjin as well. Yunjin can't be so useful by herself, although it kind of seemed like she was a necessary character for Ayato. If by any chance we get an Electro Healer, then Ayato's probably gonna ditch Yunjin, so there's that. So Yanfei, only if her particle was as slow as Klee so that you can kind of use her for a pirate DPS with Sing Chiu, that would have been really nice, but it is what it is. Let's just say she doesn't create enough damage as a pyro DPS. Moving on to Beidou. Beidou would have a problem with particles all by herself. She needs a support. She is literally a support that needs a support. She can't be a main DPS. So that is why she is C. Nonetheless, she creates enough damage here and there. And she is a mommy. Kujosara is very good character only at C6. That would be the only reason why you would use her. If not, she is very janky to play if you don't have the constellations. And I've never seen a character that requires you to get constellations like this. 
a greedy move, Hoyoverse. Ningguang. Ningguang is a Geo character. Her projectiles are a little weird and she just doesn't create enough damage for me. And there is Barbara. High replication. She heals, but she's a Walmart version of Kokomi. She still looks cute. She's a good character. If you do not have any other healing characters, you can go for Barbara. There is Sayu. I wanted to put her in F tier, but she still can help you roll around on the field. You can farm butterflies. She heals, but the problem with the very distant set for animal characters is that you have to be out in the field. Same thing with Venti, but for Sayu, if you use your Q and swap out, use some other characters, her swirl is not going to reduce the enemy's elemental res. So, that is one downside of Sayu. And let's move on to Noel. Noel C6 is really great. And if you have, by any chance, five-star weapon called Red Horn, she becomes, I wouldn't say one of the best, but she becomes a very, very good DPS. However, she is partially functional at low level worlds, but you would probably understand why I would say she's only functional at C6. So don't work on Noel unless you have C6, okay? And if you do, you can use White Blind, which is the craftable weapon. Also, you can go for Serpent Spine. Serpent Spine is actually a little better than White Blind. And also, by any chance, if you have extra Red Horn, or if you have Red Horn but don't have Ito, you can use it on Noel, okay? Don't be so sad. What more can I say about the D tier characters? There's Amber, there's Toma, there's Lisa, Chi Chi, and Keqing. I'm so sorry for putting Keqing next to Chi Chi. You probably have thought, what the f? Why is my Keqing at D? Well, D is not the lowest tier, okay? They're somewhat usable. And there is the F tier. There is Sinyan and there is Alloy. Her cryo infusion is a little janky. If the enemy does not step on her E, and then you can never do cryo attacks. <laughs> so there goes my tier list. I know that not many people will fully agree with my tier because I've been saying this so many times in the past, but everyone has a different account. Some people would have five star weapons, whereas some people wouldn't have any five star weapons. They would only work on characters. And so they probably have to deal with craftable weapons here and there. And sometimes they go for constellations. So everyone has a different opinion. Everyone has a different take. If you do agree, let me know in the comment section. And also, if you do not agree with some of the things on the list, let me know in the comment section. I'll probably take a look at those in the next video. I'm a little scared, but I really hope that this list is going to help you out. And also, for those of you guys who had no idea about those characters, I recommend you to read the comment section so that you can see whether if a lot of people agree with me or not. If they do not, if there are a lot of people who disagree with me, then don't listen to that, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video was helpful to you and if you want more Genshin Impact videos on your feed, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to my channel and click on this notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Adios.